If we want to join an active frontline, the deployment map will tell us not enough to make a good decision. So, for instance, if we go to Navish line, do we want to spawn at Blinding Stones or Unruly? This is not very easy to figure out from this deployment map. What we can do is press Escape to get out of the deployment map, press M to open the map of Home Island, and if we look on the Home Island, we see this icon, and this icon is for the State of the War map. If we move to the state of the war map, which is over here. We press E to open it up. And if we now zoom in on Navish line, we can see that we have some extra intel. If we hover over a base, we cannot see what is in the base from home island. But what we can see is a snapshot of where, for instance, infantry is fighting. So we can see that for now, it seems that the most fight is coming from blinding stones toward scrying belt. So we go to the deployment map, we press E to open deployment map, zoom in on Navish line, and now that we know that it's mostly blinding stones to scrying belt, we can spawn in blinding stones by simply uh, left clicking on it. And we spawn at the relic base at the scrying belt. Now, if we come from the roof and we press E to open the inventory of the relic base and we go to the actions panel and we click the assign spawn point button just to make sure that our spawn is set, we click it, we can see that it says this relic base is already your home spawn point. We can have two spawn points active at the same time. That is the home spawn point, which is either a, a relic base, a town hall or a border base. And we can have a forward spawn point, which is a bunker base, a forward operating base, or for instance, a long hook. To set our forward spawn point, if we press M to open the map and we look to our east, we can see that there is a bunker base. If we hover over it, we can see that it has shirts. So if we walk up to the east, we come to the bunker base over here. We press E to open the inventory of the bunker base. And if we go to the actions panel, we can see that the assign spawn point button is flashing. And this means we don't have our spawn set in this base. If we now click the assign spawn point, we can see that it says in the top left, this bunker is now your forward spawn point. So with these two spawn points active, if we die, we have two options for where we want to respawn. Now, after you died at the front, you come into the respawn timer screen. During the respawn timer, you can follow different uh, friendly players. And right now we're following Golden Boy. If we press page down, we should switch to another one. In this case, we switch to the bunker base. If we press uh, page down again, we are now following El Rocco. Once our respawn timer runs out in the top right, we can see that our spawn button becomes active. If we left click on the spawn button, we get a pop up menu where we can select our spawn location and we can see that we have our forward base, which is the bunker base, where the amount of supplies indicates the amount of spawn supplies or shirts that are available in that base and our home base, which is the relic base. And we have the option to go back to the home region. If I want to respawn at the bunker base, which is closer to the front, I can simply uh, left click that will respawn me at the bunker base. If I now press E to open the bunker base and I go to the medical category, we can see that we consumed one shirt by respawning here. If I choose to not spawn in the forward base, which is the bunker base, but respawn in my home base, the relic base, I will lose the spawn point I set in the forward base. So if I select my spawn location as the relic base, I respawn here, run out and get myself killed again. If we click the spawn button again and we see the pop up for our spawn location. We can see that our forward base spawn is not set. That is because we chose to respawn at our home base, which removes our spawn point at our forward base. So we can only respawn at the relic base right now. If we want to kit ourselves out for the front line, we can press a tab to open our inventory and see that when we spawn, we spawn with a hammer, a pistol and two magazines of pistol ammo. If we want to get rid of this, we can simply press E to open the base and go to the actions menu. And in the actions menu, we can click the submit starter kit and this will remove from our inventory a hammer, a pistol and two pistol magazines. Now to pick a weapon we want to fight with, we can go to the different categories. So if we go for the small arms category, for instance, we get a overview of all the available small arms and their ammo. If we hover over the icon of one of the weapons, we can get a description of the weapon. And there is one line that tells us which ammo it will use. So the Dusk Assault Rifle will use 7.92 millimeter ammo. The ammo is always the first ammo next 
placed in line next to the weapon. So both the Dusk and the Booker Storm Rifle use 7.92 millimeters. So the ammo next to it is going to be the 7.92 millimeter. The same goes for the Sempo Auto Rifle, which uses 7.62 millimeter, and the Argenti Rifle, which also uses 7.62 millimeter. So the next in line is the 7.62. Then there is an entire row of SMGs that all use a 9 millimeter ammo. So to get ourselves a weapon, for instance the Argenti, we click on the Argenti that will start assembling the weapon into our backpack and we then grab a clip of ammo for our Argenti and we grab another clip. Generally, two or three magazines on your person is enough because you will die pretty quickly. Now that we have a weapon and some ammo, we can press tab to go out of this menu. We can press tab again to go into our inventory, left click on our rifle, and that goes from our backpack into our primary equipment slot. If we tab out and press one, we can see in the top left that we have our Argenti equipped and that it can contain 12 bullets, but that it has zero. To reload our Argenti, we simply press R. This will start reloading our Argenti. Once we are done reloading our Argenti, we can see that we have a 12 bullets out of 12. We use a right click to aim and a left click to fire. And once we fired, we can see that our rifle now only contains 11 bullets. If we press tab to open our inventory, we can see that we still have another clip. Now, if I press R to reload my Argenti while there's still bullets in it, we will lose the bullets that are, are in my Argenti, but it will use up the clip I still had. So if I press tab again, we can see my backpack is empty and that we have 12 shots. The same goes for submitting a weapon with ammo in it into the stockpile of a base. So if I press tab to open my inventory, click on the Argenti so it goes into my backpack. If I hover over it, I can see that the ammo is 12 out of 12, so there is a full magazine in it. We tab out, press E to open the base, and if I click on the Argenti, it goes into the inventory of the relic base. If I now click in the actions panel on the submit stockpile items, that will put the Argenti in and it will lose the ammo that was in it. To use, for instance, the SMG, we can grab a, a Lion Claw, which uses 9mm. So we left click on the Lion Claw, we left click on the 9mm magazines. We press tab to tab out of the menu, press tab again to open our inventory. Left click on the Lion Claw, which goes into our primary slot. We tab out, press 1 to equip, R to reload, right mouse button to aim and left mouse button to fire. Here the same thing applies. If I still have ammo in my SMG and I have an extra magazine in my backpack and I press R to reload, I will lose the magazine that is in my SMG and I will use the magazine that was in my backpack. Heavy machine guns work a little differently. So a, a gas machine gun is a heavy machine gun. If we grab that by left clicking on it and if we hover over it, we can see that we need 12.7 millimeter ammo. We grab 12.7 millimeter ammo. We tab out of the menu, tab to open our inventory, left click to equip our guest, tab out, press one to equip our guest. And if we now press R to reload our guest, we can see that we have 75 bullets inside our guest. Now, while we are walking, we are walking very slowly. And if I try to aim, we can see that I cannot aim out. This is because this is a heavy machine gun. And to use a heavy machine gun, we have to be either crouched or be prone. So if we press C to crouch, we can see that we get our aim line and our reticule and we can hold down the left mouse button to fire. Same goes for being prone. We can go prone, we can aim out, and we can fire. The best way to move faster with a heavy gun is to unequip it. So we can simply press 1, that will put our heavy machine gun away, and we can see that we speed up quite a bit. If we now press 1 again, we equip our heavy machine gun again. If we stand next to a bunker and we aim over a bunker, we can fire our heavy machine gun even from a standing position. The same goes for in a trench. If we are in a trench and next to the wall of the trench, we can aim out and fire. If we go to the heavy arms category by clicking on the bomb icon, we can see that there are many other different weapons here as well. If we want to use a mounted gun like the Typhoon, the Elementum or the Redcatcher, the first thing we need is a tripod. For that, we go to the tools category, which is the wrench icon. We open that, we grab a tripod by simply left clicking on the tripod icon that will start assembling the tripod. 
Once we are done assembling and we tab out, we can see that we are carrying a tripod over our shoulders. To place the tripod, we can simply press B to open the place menu. This will give us a blueprint of our tripod. We can see that we are now too far to deploy. That is why it is red. So if we are close to us, we can see that it goes yellow. If we now hold down the right mouse button, we can change the aim direction of the tripod, which is a bit hard, but we can see that we are aiming to the west now. That is the direction at which the weapon we mount to it will be facing. So if we uh, left click, we start deploying the tripod. We can see that the tripod is deployed. If we come back to the relic base and we open the menu of the relic base, go to the heavy arms category and for instance, uh, grab the typhoon. We uh, left click to assemble it. This too is a heavy item, so we are carrying it. If we tab out, we can see that it is over our shoulder. Same as with the tripod, we can press a B to start placing it. And if we are close to the tripod, we can see that it snaps to the tripod, but that we are too far to deploy. So we get closer to the tripod, it turns yellow. We can left click and that will place the weapon. Now, if we are close to it, we can see in the bottom left that it says press Q to enter deployed anti-tank rifle. And if we press a Q, we grab the anti-tank rifle and we can start aiming. In the top left, we can see that we don't have any ammo in the gun nor in the inventory of the gun. The inventory of the gun can contain a maximum of 15 clips. So we come to the relic base, open the relic base and we grab 20 millimeter ammo. We come to our uh, deployed rifle, we press E to open its inventory and we place a one clip of ammo inside the inventory of the anti-tank rifle. If we now press a Q to grab a hold of the rifle and press R to reload the rifle, we can see that we are reloading and we can see that we still have one clip of ammo inside the gun and that is if we press tab to open our inventory because we use the ammo that was in our backpack. So it will use the ammo in the backpack first before it starts using ammo from the gun itself. Same as with any other gun, a right click to aim, a left click to fire. And here as well, if we press R to reload, it will get rid of the magazine that was already in the gun and it will substitute it with the new one. To dismantle the gun, we press a Q to let go of the gun. We press E to open its inventory. And in the actions panel, we click the pack up. This will start dismantling the tripod and the gun and will drop both on the ground. If we now press E to open the dropped items, we can see that it dropped the ammunition that was already in the gun. And if we press shift E, we can see that there is a tripod on the ground. We come to the relic base. If we are close to the relic base, we can simply press a V and that will submit the tripod into the relic base. Now we come back to where the gun was. We climb up onto the bunker base. We press shift E and we can see that our typhoon is on top of the bunker base. Same over here. We come to the relic base. When we are close, we press a V and that will immediately submit it into the stockpile of the relic base. Some rifles can have attachments like grenade launchers or bayonets. So if we press a tab to open our inventory and we hover over the Argenti, we can see that this allows the bayonet attachment. If we hover over the Locaster, we can see that it allows for the bayonet and the Osprey, which is the uh, rifle mounted grenade launcher that the wardens have the same goes for the blake row which is basically the warden version of the argenti but this one can also equip the grenade launcher so if we have a Osprey grenade launcher in our backpack, we can click on it and it goes into our rifle attachments slot. And if we then put a Warden rifle, for instance, the Blake Row into our primary slot, we tap out, we press one to equip our Blake Row, as we can see in the top left. And if we now press F, that will attach the Osprey. And we can see that I have one gas grenade in my inventory, but I have it not on my grenade launcher. So if I press R now, that will take the gas grenade from my inventory and put it in my grenade launcher. And if I now hold down the right mouse button, we can see that my gas grenade can be shot or thrown way further than it would be possible by hand. 
To detach the grenade launcher, we can simply press F again, and that will take the grenade launcher off. It will also unload the gas grenade. If we try the same thing with an Argenti, which is a colonial rifle, so we put the Argenti into our primary slot, tab out, press 1 to equip our Argenti, as we can see in the top left. And now if we press F, nothing is happening, and that is because the Argenti is not fit to have an Osprey attached to it. Even though it doesn't fit an Osprey, it does fit a Buckhorn bayonet. So if we click the Buckhorn, it will swap out the grenade launcher for the Buckhorn in our equipment slot. We have our Argenti already out. If we now press F, we fix our bayonet. And if we walk and uh, left click, we start stabbing with our bayonet, which is insta-death for anybody you hit. You can also hold down the left mouse button and move while you're stabbing. The bayonet also fits on the Warden rifle, so if we grab, for instance, the Lowcaster, which is the Warden standard rifle, we equip that and we press F, we can see that we have the bayonet on our Lowcaster. With a bayonet on our rifle, we can still fire it, so if we grab a clip of ammo from the bunker base over here, we press R to load it into our Lowcaster. And with our bayonet equipped, we can still see our ammo count as well. So if I uh, left click without aiming, I will stab. And if I uh, right click to aim and left click, I will fire. Even though the Colonials cannot use the Osprey to throw grenades with their own rifles, they can use their own handheld grenade launcher, which is called the Lunaire. So if we come to the bunker base over here, we press E to open it up. And if we go to the heavy arms category, we can see that there is a, a Lunaire here. So if we uh, left click on that, that will start assembling it into our backpack. If we hover over it, we can see that it can fire green ash grenades, smoke grenades, and tremola grenades. So if we grab the tremola grenade, and if we go to the small arms category, we can see that there is a gas grenade as well. So we can grab a gas grenade. We tab out of the menu, press tab again to go into our inventory. We equip our grenade launcher by clicking on it, which goes into our primary slot, tab out, press 1. And we can see in the top left that it selects our gas grenade first, which is not in our Lunaire yet because it says 0 of 1. If we press F again, we can switch our preference to the Tremola. So if I press R, that will load the Tremola into the Lunaire. But if I change my mind and want to have the gas grenade equipped, I can press F again. So it shows the gas grenade, press R, and that will pull out the Tremola and put in the gas grenade, which we can see if we press tab, we can see that the Tremola is back in our backpack. The gun works the same as any other gun, so you hold down the right mouse button to aim and you uh, left mouse button to fire. When we are aiming with our weapon, we can see a white line extending from our weapon to our aim point. This white line indicates our effective range and where it starts to fade out is where we lose the effective range of our currently equipped weapon. So for instance, the Argenti loses its effectiveness right around this point where we can see that the white line starts to fade out. Below our aim point, we can see a yellow line. That yellow line indicates how high we are aiming. So if we are standing, we are basically aiming at somebody's chest. If we crouch, we can see that we are uh, lowering our aim. And if we go prone, that our aim is just above the ground. Also at our aim point is a four uh, white lines. Those four white lines indicate how accurate our shot will be. So when we keep moving our aim point, we can see that our shot will not be very stable because the four white lines are pretty far away from our aim point. If we stand still, we can see that it converges on our aim point. When it is fully converged, we basically will always hit what we are aiming at. This is different for different weapons. So if, for instance, we equip a shotgun instead of our Argenti, if we aim out with the shotgun, we can see that it has a very short effective range and that it will not converge on our aim point, meaning that we will never have a steady shot, which is not an issue because this is a, a weapon with a lot of spread. The speed at which our shot stabilizes, or in other words, the speed at which our 
where white lines converge on. Our aim point is influenced by a couple of things. The first one is our stand. So if we are standing, it takes a relatively long time for the four white lines to converge on our aim point, as we can see. If we crouch, it will stabilize our shot quicker. So if we come from here and we aim here, we can see that it is faster in converging. And if we go prone by pressing X, we can see that we have a stable shot almost all of the time, but this comes at the cost of having a slower turn rate. If we stand up again and we come closer to the chest over here, we can see in the center of our screen that there is a shield icon. This shield icon indicates our cover. Our cover status also influences how quickly our shot stabilizes. With a little bit of cover, we can see that our shot stabilizes faster than if we don't have any cover, as we can see here. If we are in full cover and we aim, we can see that our shot stabilizes way faster, as we can see here. There are four levels of cover. No cover, minimal cover, medium cover, and full cover. Now we can increase this even more by crouching behind the chest and doing the same maneuver. So we come here, aim there, and we can see that we have an almost instant stabilized shot. When a lot of fire is coming your way, your cover will be broken. And when your cover breaks, we can see that by the shield icon turning red. Or if you're out in the open field, it will be indicated by a three bullet icon. If you are being suppressed, the time it takes to stabilize your shot increases. The AI of pillboxes, rifle garrisons and machine gun garrisons can be suppressed by concentrating the fire onto them. When an enemy rifle garrison is suppressed, we can see that by the fast flashing flag on top of the rifle garrison. As long as it is suppressed, it will not be able to fire. There is more to the cover and suppression system than I'm showing here, but I try to keep it simple. So if you want to learn more, you can go, for instance, to the wiki article, which I will link in the description below. Besides projectile weapons, there are also grenades. There are specific anti-tank grenades. There are heavy explosive grenades. There are gas grenades and there are fragmentation grenades. So for instance, the fragmentation grenade for the colonials, that is the Boma Stone. If we grab Boma Stones here, by uh, left-clicking on them, they go into our backpack. We press a tab to exit out of that menu. Press tab again to open our inventory. Left-click on the Boma Stone. We can see that it goes into our tertiary slot. If you now press tab to go out of our inventory and press 3 to equip the Boma Stone grenade, we look in the top left, we can see that we have the Boma Stone grenade equipped. If I now hold down the right mouse button, we can see that there is a, a throwing arc extending from our character to our aim point and if we uh, left click we throw the boma stone we can see that it lands over there and after a while it explodes if we come to the bunker base over here again and we grab the heavy explosive grenade the mammon and we take it out of our backpack into our tertiary slot so it is equipped there we tab out press three to equip it and we can see in the top left, we have the Mammon equipped. If we now right click and aim, we can see that we have a throwing arc again. The difference between the frag grenade and the heavy explosive grenade is that the heavy explosive grenade will explode on impact. So if for instance, we try to throw a f past the tree, but we aim accidentally in the tree, we can see that by our aim line going red. If we now uh, left click and throw, we can see that it explodes as soon as it hits the tree. The heavy explosive grenade deals heavy explosive damage, which is best used against structures. The frag grenade deals a shrapnel damage, which is best used against infantry. 
There are also grenades that deal specific anti-tank damage. Those are the White Ass Flask Grenade, which is a Warden exclusive, and the anti-tank Sticky Bomb, which is available for both sides. So if we grab a White Ash Flask Grenade and a, a Sticky Bomb, and we press tab to go out of the menu, press tab again to go into our inventory. And if we equip the white ash flask grenade, we see that it also goes into our tertiary slot. We press three to equip it. And we can aim this the same as with other grenades. We get an aim line and we can uh, left click to throw. Just like the heavy explosive grenade, the white ash flask grenade will explode on impact. Then there is the sticky, so if we press tab to open our inventory, click on the sticky so it goes into our tertiary slot, press a 3 to equip it. With the sticky in our hand, if we hold down the right mouse button to aim, we can see that it has a, a very short throwing distance, but it sticks to whatever target it goes to. So if we uh, want to put it on the tree over here, we can uh, left click, that throws it, sticks it to the tree, and once the fuse is done, it will explode. If we come to the bunker base again, we can find that in the inventory is a colonial exclusive, which is the Igni Fist. That is an anti-tank RPG that goes in the tertiary slot as well. So this isn't a RPG launcher like the Cutler or the Venom. This is a separate thing that will disappear as soon as we use it. So if we uh, left click to assemble it, it goes into our backpack, we tap twice, make sure that it goes from our backpack to our equipment, press 3 to equip it, we can see that it is equipped in the top left, we hold down the right mouse button, we can see that there is a slight arc to the Igni Fist, we aim again at the tree, we uh, left click to fire, and now that we fire the Igni Fist, if we press tab to open our inventory, we can see that there is no Igni Fist left, so it is a one-use weapon. Also available in our bunker base is a smoke grenade. These can be used to uh, cover our position. So if we grab a smoke grenade by left clicking on it, tap twice to go into our inventory, left click on the smoke grenade so it goes into our tertiary slot, and with it equipped, the same as with any other grenade, if we hold down the right mouse button to aim, we can see the throwing arc to where the uh, grenade will end up. A uh, left click to throw it. And the difference with a smoke grenade, obviously, as the name suggests, it produces smoke. And if we sit in the smoke, we are invisible to enemy players and friendly players. And AI has a harder time targeting us. It will still see us, so we can't hide for the AI inside a smoke cloud, but it will take more time to target us and it needs more time to ramp up the shooting. In the bunker base is also a gas grenade, and a gas grenade, as we can see, deals poisonous gas damage. So if we grab the green ash grenade, we tap twice to go into our inventory, a left click on the green ash grenade so it goes into our tertiary slot, press 3 to equip it. Same as with any other grenade, if we hold down the right mouse button, we can see the throwing arc, and if we uh, left click, we throw the grenade. Now, a gas grenade, as we can see, uh, disperses gas and it gives a bleed effect, and if you stand too long inside the gas, you die. To deal with gas grenades, we can use a gas mask and a gas filter. So if we go to the tools category, which is the wrench icon, we can grab a gas mask. So if we uh, press a tab to go out of the menu, press tab again to open our inventory and we click the gas mask, we can see that the filter is zero out of 100. So it needs a filter. Now we can equip it even without a filter. So if we left click, we can see that it goes into our uh, gas mask slot. If we tab out, we can see in the top left that our uh, gas mask icon is uh, very transparent. That is because it doesn't have a filter. So to grab a filter, we press E to open the base. We uh, left click on the filter that goes into our backpack. This unfortunately does not equip the filter into our gas mask. So if we press tab to go into our inventory, hover over the gas mask, we can see that it's still at a zero. The way to equip the filter is to uh, left click on the gas mask so it goes back into our backpack, a click again and it goes into our equipment and it took the filter with us, which we can see if we hover over it because it says filter 100 out of 100. 
Okay, if we now use a green ash grenade on our own position, so we aim it very close, we hold down the uh, left mouse button and we cook the grenade, which lets it go, we can see that over time, our filter is being used inside the gas cloud. So with our filter at 40 out of 100, if we overcook a grenade again, we just hold down the left mouse button until it drops. We can see that we are inside the uh, gas area and we can see that if we opened the inventory that our uh, gas filter disappeared and it went into our gas mask. So it auto equipped once we had the gas mask on. It also auto equipped the next uh, gas grenade as we can see in our tertiary slot. So we grab the next green ash grenade, hold down the right mouse button to aim, uh, left to throw, we throw it away come close to it. When our filter is almost fully depleted, we can see in the top left that our gas mask icon turned from white to red. So if we press tab to open our inventory, we hover over our gas mask, we can see that it is at 20 out of 100. As infantry, you're not tied to fighting out in the open. You can mount differing firing ports if you want to. For instance, inside town halls, there are certain spots where you can get in as a infantry person. So if we come over here, we can see that there is a cross on the floor. If we stand there, we can see in the bottom left that it says press Q to enter town base. If we do that, we can see that we are sitting inside this fire port. If we now equip our weapon, which currently is is the Malone MK2, as we can see in the top left. And we hold down the right mouse button. We can see that we have a, a pretty decent uh, firing arc of about 180 degrees, but that we turn uh, very slowly. This is both due to having a Malone, which is a heavy machine gun, and because we are in a firing port in the crouched position. We can do the same thing with a pillboxes. So for instance, the rifle pillbox, if we stand next to it, we can see that it says press Q to enter a rifle pillbox. We can press Q and hop in, press 1 to equip our weapon, right mouse to aim and a left mouse button to fire. Same goes for AT pillboxes over here. Stand next to it, press Q and you can hop in and you have a 360 firing arc. If we do the same thing with the machine gun pillbox, stand next to it, press Q to hop in, press 1 to equip our weapon, and we hold down the right mouse button to aim, we can see that it has the same firing arc as the machine gun pillbox itself, about 90 degrees. The same can be done with machine gun garrisons and rifle garrisons. So if we come to the machine gun garrison over here and we walk into it, we can see that in the bottom left it says press Q to enter machine gun garrison. We press Q and then we hop in. We can press 1 to equip our weapon and if we aim out we can see that we have basically the same firing arc as the machine gun garrison. We can do the same thing with the uh, rifle garrison over here. So if we press a uh, left control to see the upside of our bunker, we make sure that we are inside the rifle garrison. We see in the bottom left that it says press Q to enter rifle garrison. We press Q and with our weapon out, we can see that we have a firing arc of 360 degrees. Wrenches can not only be used to unlock locked vehicles, but it can also be used to disassemble certain things. So if we come to the relic base over here, press E to open it up and go to the tools category. If we grab a wrench by uh, left clicking on it, so it assembles it into our backpack, tab out of the menu, tab into our inventory, uh, left click on the wrench so it goes into our primary slot. And we come over here where we see a team mines barbed wire and a barbed wire fence. We can equip the wrench by pressing a one and we can see in the top left that we have our wrench equipped. If we now come up to the AT mine over here and I uh, left click, it says that I must be crouched. So we press C to crouch. And if I now left click, I will start dismantling the mine. Once I am done, the mine will disappear. Now, if we crouch towards the barbed wire over here, we can uh, left click and we can see that we are dismantling the barbed wire. Dismantling the barbed wire will also get rid of the barbed wire that was used to make it. And the same goes for the barbed wire fence. So we come to the barbed wire fence and left click to start disassembling it. 
So if we come over here to the trench where there is barbed wire, logic tells us that if we crouch with the wrench in our hand, we can disassemble the barbed wire. This is not true. So to get rid of barbed wire that is on the sides of trenches, we need a hammer and at least 20 basic materials. So we press tab to open our inventory, make sure that we equip our hammer by clicking on it. That will switch out our wrench for our hammer. We tab out, we equip our hammer, and with our hammer equipped, we press F to go into upgrade mode, which we can see in the top left and also by the uh, builder menu. If we now press E to go into the upgrade menu and in the upgrades, we hover over the barbed wire, we can see that in red, it says right click to remove modification. For this to work, we need to be sure that the blueprint of the uh, barbed wire is overlapping with the actual spot where we want to remove the barbed wire. We can do this by using the scroll wheel, which will move the position of the barbed wire blueprint over the trench. So if we scroll up, we can see that it goes around. We now have it overlapped with the existing barbed wire and we can simply right click and that will start modifying the structure as we can see. And once we're done modifying, we remove the barbed wire. So if I come here, I can now just run up and not get stuck in the barbed wire. If you are bleeding, you can see that by the bleeding icon in the top left and you have a bandage on you, you can press tab to open your inventory, equip the bandage onto your tertiary slot, press three to equip it and hold down the left mouse button and that will start patching up yourself. This will only stem the bleeding, so you won't bleed out, but you still need healing because you are still injured. So you need to go find a medic.